everybody, this is Drex One. Welcome to another episode of the History of the Bay podcast, sponsored by the good people of Amoeba Music San Francisco. Support your local record stores. Also got a shout out Dying Breed in San Francisco, where you can get all your graffiti supplies. And our newest sponsor, STEM Social. Behind the lens, we got King Said. On the boards, we got the one and only D.O. And today, we got a few special guests in the building on my Far left, we got super producer. This man's catalog goes back many years. He's played a huge role in the Bay Area behind the scenes and in front of the camera as well. I'm talking about the one and only Four Racks of the Mechanics. What's up, Four Racks? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? And in the center today, we got one of the founders of very important Bay Area staple Live Wire Records. This man has paved his way as an independent boss, hustler, and of course, rapper with dozens of projects in his catalog. I'm talking about West Oakland's own Jay Stalin. Thank you, thank you Big Dregs. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming, brother. Oh, Appreciate man, it's you. All love. You already know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I'm glad both of y'all are here today because your stories are interconnected on the music tip. And I always start at the very beginning. So why don't y'all tell us uh, where you grew up? And, uh, you know, what it was like for you coming up in your early days. Oh, man, I'm, uh, damn. So, shit, let's just jump right into it. I'm from, uh, I'm from Cypress Village. When I was, uh, when I was five, my brother died. He was 18. He died in 88. So I was five. He swallowed some cocaine in a high-speed chase. So he was in a high-speed chase. Like, if you sell dope, then you know that you think, I mean, like, niggas who sell dope, we swallow dope and then and, and throw it back up all the time. So it was just one of those moments to where he was in a high-speed chase with the police. He swallowed the dope because he wasn't sure if he was going to get away or not. But he got away in the high-speed, but he got to the house and, uh, he was drinking milk. He was trying to throw that shit up, and uh, man, he couldn't get it up, and uh, it, 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 it killed him. Wow. Yeah. So that was. You know what I'm saying. You said you were that. you were five years old when yeah. that. So when I asked you about your childhood, that kind of set the tone then for what it was like for you growing up. Yeah. Yeah. So me growing. So me growing up in Cyprus. Um. Every. Everybody remembered my brother, and you feel me? And so, like, I don't even, I was five. Nobody ever, like, I, I remember him dying and all this shit, but I didn't know the the back the backstory behind it, you feel me? But me growing up in Cyprus, everybody kind of, um, they uh, kind of always told me who he was, and, um, I don't even think that they even knew that they kind of like led me down a path that was like kind of was like a direction like well you know your brother was a nigga you know your brother was this you know your brother was that so you feel like it, it like it already puts you in a mind state to where you feel like you got to live up to a certain you feel me you know what I'm saying I don't feel like that now but then it was like that you have you watched the wire right sure remember when the mama Weebay Right. Remember Weebay? Remember her son? She said the son. She like, nigga, you yeah. Weebay son. You better woo -woo -woo go out there. Woo. That's real. Like, that's real life in a black community. Mm-hmm. That's real. Mm-hmm. So, doing that, like, at what point did, did hip-hop come into your life? I mean, um, it always was there. Like, I, 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 I always consider myself more of a fan than an artist mm -hmm. anytime because... If you're not a fan of something, fa fanism is what makes you fall in love or like something. And then whether you fall in love and like it enough to make it your own career, that's your choice. I love music just enough to go be a, mu a musician. You feel me? Yeah, uh, off camera we was talking about Beach Street and just the overall impact of hip hop. Was there is there any particular album, record, movie, artist that really made you No, I mean B Street, like that. B Street like that beat like I saw B Street. I went and 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 and, and made my mama go buy me the shit that they had on the TV, Pumas. I I I, I got a 
mad I started trying to like the influence like yeah. you feel me like if something listen there's a lot of things that that influences you but there's nothing wrong with following something that influences you positively I like that there's only wrong with following influences that's gonna let you that's gonna influence you into jail or, or the grave then that's the shit that you don't follow. But like I got B Street tatted on my leg because if it wasn't no B Street, it wouldn't be no J Style and rapper. That's crazy. It probably would be a J Style and trapper. Mm. It probably you feel me because J Style was a name that came from me just doing a paper, and I probably would have made that my rap name, like my I mean my dope dealer name, like Ghost, and the nigga never know would have known who the real f- was selling dope. You feel me? That's just a name. A name is just a name. You know what I'm saying? But if it wasn't for B Street, I wouldn't be me because B Street is what made me fall in love with music, melodies, like 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 Double K Blood when that was sitting in there with that with that b- like tapping on that sh- like like just doing that it's working like like he just like 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 all that blood like like if you can't sleep. If you think about something that you that that's so much that you can't sleep, you probably need to make that your career, or you're never going to get a rest. Mm, that's powerful, right there. You feel me? The only way I could fill that void that I had from watching B Street was to go be a musician, was to go have my own f-ing beats that I heard on B Street, was to go make my own clothes like I see them wear. Mm. You feel me? Was to go make? I had to go make my own B Street and my own to be happy. And no, not to be happy, to be satisfied. Happiness and satisfaction is two different things. Feel me? But what about? We have our own thing going on in the Bay, right? So, what was your first exposure to Bay Area rap? Uh, it so I don't know how true this story is or not. <laughs> Because, no, for real, because I've never really talked to Fody about it. But my guy brother Jasper, his dad was a doctor in one of these hospitals in the Bay Area or whatever. And he the one who, he gave us an E-40 CD. Like that first one, like with flamboyant, it, with Mr. Flamboyant on it, like that one. I mean, the first introduction was was short, but but like that was like that was like where like you just hear it everywhere. Like we was like we couldn't listen. Like forty was the first shit that we could listen. Like we couldn't listen. To short. We had to sneak and listen to short. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Because I was five. You feel me? I, and I knew Freaky Tales word for word, but I couldn't ex- I couldn't go tell my mama to go buy me the Freaky Tales tape mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. I shouldn't even know the lyrics to the <laughs> shit. You feel me? So we been new short, but Mr. Flamboyant was the first song that we could actually ask our parents to go buy for us. That was way back then. Mm. And my like me and my next, like oh, I'm just a hustler. Oh. I'm just a hustler. Like, so that was our introduction to like, I mean, it, it was short in the underground, but 40, that was the first shit that we could ask our parents to go buy for us with sure. Mr. Flamboyant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oakland rap, I feel like from the outside looking in, most people probably associated with East Oakland. You're from West Oakland. In West Oakland, is there anybody who came before you that was particularly influential? Because I feel oh, like yeah. you, I know, I might know who you're going to say, but I feel like you really put it, West Oakland, on the map for your generation. But prior to you, who who were your, your neighborhood influences? I mean, like, ste- yeah, mine too, bro. oh, my bad. Steady Mob, Steady Mob and Signed to No Limit. Right. You feel me? And, like, that was just, like... Whenever you see people coming from where you come from do big things, it's, it's if you're not a hater, it's motivation. You feel me? So I'm a young guy. I'm a young guy in, in the hood rapping and shit. So I see I'm from Cypress Village. 
I'm from 10th Street. They from Ghost Town. They from 31st. You feel me? 31st or Marlowe the King. I'm from, that's 21 blocks up. That ain't nowhere. Mm -hmm. So I see some niggas from 21 blocks up who signed with Master P. That just let me know that I could do it too. You feel me? That just let me know. You feel me? That I'm on the right track and, and, and don't quit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, blood, it take a lot of time to put in that work. You feel me? Like, I was just like, we passed, I was with my son the other day, we passed the Johnson & Johnson building in um, Santa Clara. And I was just telling him like, see that that name right there? Like that name is on all the lotions, baby powders, everything. You see that name every day, but you don't see it. But it's, it's it come from right there. You feel me? And then he was just asking me like, like you feel me? Like, what did they do, dad? What do you do? I'm like, they just, they kept the business and the family and they never quit. Mm. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? Like, you just, you, you can't quit. Like, that's the thing. Nobody does, nobody ever gets it right all the time. But the ones that separate, the motherfuckers who succeed and the people who don't succeed is consistency and not quitting. You feel me? This was... This used to DJ for Digital Underground. Mm -hmm. Shock G is dead. This is the biggest producer in, in, in one of the biggest producers in the world, but for sure, top five in, in California for sure. And that's all from not quitting, blood. You feel me? That's just from not quitting, blood. Real talk. And just, if you dope, just don't quit. That's it. Easy. Uh, so steady mobbing. I wanted to ask about another West Oakland rapper because I saw a music video from 18 years ago. Ooh. It's pro I'm guessing it's your first music video. It's called 808. And oh, that was me in this. Yeah, I seen you in there. Yeah, come on, man. And I seen Shock G rest in peace in there. Yeah. But I was gonna ask you about Saphir. Oh if, man, that's family. If come Saphir on. Saphir had any type of influence on you coming up. Uh, man, so first of all, them was Sorry, all. Say what? Put the mic down a little bit. So them was all him. I didn't. Them was all dot. Sophia was in digital underground too. Yeah, mm -hmm. like them was all dot. So you feel I'm just a dot and tweet is the mechanics. You feel me? I'm mm -hmm. I'm just a young. I'm a young nigga. I'm a young wild nigga from West Oakland, selling crack every day, <laughs> carrying a gun, walking in establishments, taking my gun out. Cause, cause the mother hurting my hip and putting it on the table, not knowing that 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 everybody don't got a gun. So I look like the the stupid. Nigga. I'm thinking, you feel me? But like that's where I come from. So you feel me? Like, like them, like all oh, that was that. That's why you feel me. That's why I'm saying like this never quit, bro. Mm -hmm. Let's pass the mic to to Forex real quick. You're from Oakland as well. Originally from uh, Chicago. Originally from but Chicago. I came here okay. like as a teen, so uh -huh. so I've been here like you know. This is what you would consider your definitely home. home. Yeah, yeah, Oakland. yeah, yeah. East so, Oakland. Uh, how like what was your childhood like? Grow, uh, or your teenage years like growing up there, and and how did music come into your life? Um, I mean, I had a pretty good, uh, pretty rounded uh, childhood. My moms and pops broke up. That's kind of what brought me to Cali. So. Even that turbulent is like part of my that D in my DNA. It's like that balance, you know. what I'm saying the good you had that, now you ain't got that, and so I mean, I, it was pretty. It was pretty happy. I had a pretty happy childhood outside of that. That was the that was the the thing that turned the tables. You know what I'm saying? Sure. But once I got to Oakland, it was just trying to settle in and figure out what this new culture was, was about. And I had a cousin who introduced me to Too Short right off the back. And he was like, I mean, the, the music, not short personally, but, and he, he had this term, he was like, this, this the beat. I was be like, I was like, what, what's the beat? Well, I don't even understand this terminology. Man, this the beat, you gotta hear this, <laughs> this the beat. Way before niggas was saying that slap, and he used to say, this the beat. So he would play me these Too Short records, and I'd be like, this ain't gonna never work, bro. He's cussing. This ain't gonna never get on radio. It's never gonna. It's never gonna pop. This is what I was saying because I was fresh off the plane to to Oakland and shit. But um, 
fell in love with that shit, with what with all that dangerous music shit, you feel me so i was uh, i was tuning in to that but my first real real influence that made me say i want to be a part of this culture was when i heard um grandmaster flash the the message mm-hmm. that don't push me cuz i'm close to the edge when I heard that record, I was like, whatever this is, I want to be a part of it. And I dove in head first, and I ain't never looked back. My father was an artist. My grandfather was an artist. These niggas <coughs> drew. Mm-hmm. It was like all my childhood pictures, I'm running around with a pencil and a piece of paper telling my daddy, draw me a train, draw me this, draw me. So I come from art first. Then from, from there, I started cutting hair. So that was my little hustle. In high school, you feel me, cutting in box cuts and lines, and so there I'm hip hop from the drawing to the to that. And then from there we start doing recipes. My brother Plan B and my brother uh, Mike Dream. These are yes, if you know graffiti, Junction. you know who yeah, these are too. Course. So these was my big brothers. They they was schooling me on graffiti. So I would go with them like the shirt teak and do airbrush pants and air all the with them. You feel me? So I had that. Then from there, um, I lined up with Money B from Digital Underground, and they started bringing me to the studio. Before you know it, I was like running shit in their studio. And I wanted to DJ, but I ain't had the equipment. So I would just f around up in their shit, you know what I'm saying? And I wound up getting a little pre pre production studio, and then um, from there, DJ Fuse, shout out DJ Fuse, uh, had took a hiatus from from the group, from Digital, and they needed a DJ. So boom, I got I got the gig as a DJ. But I was already running the music, the, the drum machines and all the shit in the studio. So got the DJ job. Now I'm producing. And like Jay said, Shock G was the first dude who bought first nigga who cashed me out for some music. It's making beats for Pac. Right. He, he didn't need to pay me for no music. So, you know, then I, that gave me my, my first run in with like, okay, I can move this music. So from there, it was like, boom, now I'm on tour. And then the Loonies would run with the with Digital Underground because the five on the remix and shit. So whenever Digital wasn't on the road and the Loonies had shows, I started DJing for the Loonies. So now I'm going back and forth with these groups. And I'm on the tour buses. We freestyling and getting high. Now I'm rapping with niggas. I'm freestyling. I'm busting his ass on the mic. You know what I'm saying? So from there, it's just kept going. So from writing, drawing, to graffiti, to DJing, to rapping, to producing the records. Now I'm writing hooks. Now I'm, from there, I went to directing videos. Now I'm directing, bro, the, the list goes on and on. I'm hip-hop from the beginning mm-hmm. until now. Mm-hmm. So that um, that that ties it to what Stalin was just saying about never quitting, never, never giving up, and if you love it enough, then you kind of gotta do it, I right? Can't quit. Yeah. I can't quit. Here, Jay. If you stay in it long enough and you love it long enough, it's always gonna be another avenue. Stem social. Throughout my day, I'm handling business. I start my day with a workout, post some content, write some emails, bust some plays, make some music, make some art, and then I record podcasts at night. How do I have all this energy? Stem Social's 5 Mushroom Complex. This is a healthy, all-natural, all-organic vitamin supplement that can increase your immune support, cognitive enhancement, and overall vitality. It's powered by five different mushrooms that have been used in traditional medicine for centuries, like turkey tail, Rishi, cordyceps, chaga, and lion's mane mushrooms. If you're interested in trying Stem Social's Five Mushroom Complex, check out stemsocial.io or go to the links in the description. Well, I'm, I'm going to come back to Forex's story in a minute because I like this back and forth style um, because your, your stories are... I'm seeing some similarities and I'm seeing how connected it is. But Jay, you so you mentioned you was you was real deep in the streets, and uh, it's interesting you had mentioned B Street because the theme of that movie and the title song is "Beat the Street," and you talked about negative influences and positive influences. So, at what point do you start experimenting with writing, rapping, and seeing that as as a path that you could take? I always um, 
I always loved music. Like I always was a fan of music. Just I was a writer first. Like when I was in a like so when I was in the sixth grade, I used to write movies in, in class. Like they'd be like 12, 20 pages and shit. And then and they were real dope. They were real creative. My teacher used to let me sit in front of the class and read them to the class. But it got to a point where I just did that shit all day and I wouldn't do my work. So my teacher had a conference with my mom. And she like, listen, the boy is very creative. I'm, I'm not trying to stun his creativeness. Like, 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 but he got to do his work. Like, he thinks that, like, he, he be like, who else in here is writing 20 page anything? So he like, but, but no, that was, that was my mentality for real. But like, I thought that I'm like, I'm in here writing movies. I'm going to be rich. I, we all doing this homework. <laughs> like, I, that was my, that was like, that was my real mentality. So that was what I was doing before I started writing 16 bars, raps. I was writing 20 page movies because I wanted to write movies in the sixth grade. And my teacher told my mom, I love the movies, but you got to get him to do his work or he's not going to be able to come to this school anymore. It's called an expelled. <laughs> I swear to God, bro. So how did that translate into starting to uh, write raps? I just... I always loved music. Like, Prince and Tupac is my favorite artist. So I always was a fan of music. Like, I was the person in the sixth grade listening to Prince, Michael Jackson. And so we had a, um, we went on a field trip. So I'm the only one on, I'm the only one with, with, a, with a Walkman and the headphones on the field trip. So I'm letting everybody listen to my shit. So I remember that field trip particularly. I had... Purple Rain album, um, um, the Michael Jackson album. Uh, I had I had Purple Rain, Thriller, the um, Stack and Chips, um, J Dub. Life ain't never been a luxury. Mm. Gotta get your money on every day of the week. I had that tape, and I had um. The Tony 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 album, the one with with um with with anniversary and all them on it. So I'm 12 years old in the sixth grade. I'm the only one in school with the headphones. So listen to my playlist at 12. What what point do you take it to the studio? Oh, when you start writing. When you start writing, and then you have actual lyrics. You have actual. You feel me? You go find the studio. So my um my story is my story is very crazy. So um um I went to McClimans High School in West Oakland. Uh my best friend, uh not my best friend, but my brother Lamar, rest in peace, he was best friends with DJ Duro, the producer who 415. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I caught a dope case. And He's also I, from West Oakland, too. Bro. For sure. He's yeah. from San Francisco. He's from my same projects. Okay. I'm, I'm going to get there. Mm-hmm. But um, I had caught a dope case when I was 16. And um, I had a, uh, I was on probation, so I had a curfew. So only could go to school and home. But I was, but before I was, I was writing raps and shit before I caught, before I was doing all that. So one day, I ran into DJ Durrell on the corner of um, 26th and Market, at the, at, at the 25th and Market at the store, at the, uh, at, at the, at the, uh, the Milton Street store. That store ain't on Milton Street, but that's the Milton Street store. But anyway, I see Daryl there, and um, I'm like, I asked this, I'm like, Daryl, I've been rapping. Well, we already know who I am because my brother that passed away, they was best friends when they was younger. Wow. My brother, you know I'm saying he was in the streets and he passed away and Daryl ended up being a... So I see Daryl and I'm like, um, Daryl, like I'm rapping this shit. Ooh. Like, so to make a long story short, he tell me to come to the studio. So I go to his studio. You know what I'm saying? I go there for like the first week and after the first week, I'm like, hey, I'm on this shit. 
boo, I need you to holler at this P.O. and tell her that this where I be at after school. <laughs> so Daryl, you feel me? He um did that for me, but I really did. You know, you know, I I went to the studio. Every day. You're taking it serious. I really like, I, I, mm-hmm. I really did. Like, I didn't have him lie for me. Right. Like, I really did. But that was that situation. And um, come to think of it now, he didn't let me record for like a year. So I never did no songs. I would just, I used to just go there and just be there. And he would have all type of rappers come through. I'm talking about everybody from Nate Dogg to Badass to Steady Mob and to Sebo to everybody was coming through there. And I used to just be sitting there like, 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 just say, just say, um, Nate Dogg come in. Nate Dogg would come in. He'll pull up a beat and play a beat for Nate Dogg. And I'll just sit there and write to the beat. So I did that for every beat that he was bringing artists in playing beats for. You feel me? Like, I did that. So I had hella material. You feel me? Like, I had hella material. But he never, um, he didn't, we didn't do no songs for like a whole year. But thinking about it now, the way I did it and introduced it, like, Hey, I need you to holler at this whoopty whoop. He probably thought that that's all I wanted it for was to get out the shit. I never even thought about that until I got older. Like maybe he thought nigga, that you just wanted to a place to go and you wouldn't even trip it off the music like that. And shit. Like that wasn't the. But anyway, to make a long story short, that was that. And then Richie Rich came, and I was in there rapping. And he, he, he heard me rapping and he asked Daryl, he like, do you have like, like, I was just rapping over beats and shit. And Rich like, you want no songs or nothing? Woo. And then he played one song. It was called, um, What You Moving? And then um, Rich liked it that much. And he told Daryl to bring me to the grill. And um, shit, it's been up from the grill after then. I uh I was up at the grill for a minute. I shout out to Richie Rich, shout out to Lev. I was up there for a minute. So I, I was supposed to be doing an album with Daryl. That never fell through. So Rich came and he found the music. So then I was at the grill with Rich now. Rich was supposed to do the album. That never fell through. So I took all them songs at the grill and I burnt them up on the CD. And I bootlegged them up and created my own buzz. And then I met Dot and Tweed. And then a real album came out. So you actually you appeared on one of Richie Rich's albums. Yeah, Nixon Pride Roundtree. Right. I, every song that I'm on on that on every song that I'm on on that album, I I I I I wrote the hooks and and and, and created the the idea and the melody. Of, of everything of the songs. it's That's a hell of a process because what I hear from you telling that story is just the training of not actually recording but sitting there listening to these great artists, the DJ Daryl and everyone he's working with, seeing how the song is made, seeing how the process of being in a studio because that's really something you got to learn to become a serious artist and to just sit there for a year studying and writing and perfecting your craft, that's actually like a really good approach for any youngster out there, I would say, who wants to rap, to really study and take that time to be around other people so you can get that training experience. I mean, not to, and, you know, not to jump in, but some people would even say this is artist development. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's what a lot of the youngsters don't have right now. Yeah. Because technology made it so yeah. easy for anybody to have. Uh, you can pull out your phone and make a TikTok now. Doing it. Yeah, but mm-hmm. you don't really have the experience. Yeah. The experience is, teaches you so much more and adds to what you can, you know, your, your, your arsenal of tools. You know? Yeah, well, say so you're getting some jewels from 
a legendary producer and a legendary rapper right now, boys and girls. I also heard a story that you ran into Mac Dre back in those days. Is that did I hear that correctly? Uh yeah, no. Um, I mean, we was at the grill. Like uh we used to be at the grill, man. I, I met them at the grill. Like the grill was shout the out to um, Lev. shout out to Lev, man. The the, the grill, awesome. the grill was the place, man. That was the place to be. So uh yeah, um, I was um I I I was um I was very 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 young and um just very hungry, bro. And um Dre seen me at the grill one day and he wanted to sign me. And and I mean I signed I don't like I don't like I've never got no money from no rap niggas, so I'm not gonna say sign. So you feel me? Like ain't no rap niggas never gave me no money. So I don't you feel me? So I ain't gonna say like I don't know he wanted to but I just know he, Dre really took a liking to me, and um, Richie Rich was like, "No, nah, that's my artist," and, and that was that. You feel me? I mean, it, it was town business at the time. Well, that's the trip, and we'll get to this later because you eventually were part of something called Town Business. That was an extension of this. So yeah, that was when that was when I that was when I went and did my own thing. Right, right, right. We'll get to that. I just thought that was interesting how. He was interested in working with you, and then that came into fruition years later. Because everything always come back to the forefront. That part. Um, so you going back to that that CD that you basically bootlegged, right? Was this, are you talking burn CD, or are you talking you went to go get it pressed up, or uh, oh, burn CD? Mm -hmm. So I was at Durrell House for a year, not recording, and then. Not even not recording. It's just when when somebody say, um, you're a kid, like, you feel me? Like, me and Elijah have an album out. I can't tell this nigga we gonna do an album and the motherfucker never come out. You feel me? So, motherfucker, like, we gonna do an album. That don't happen. Then, bam, okay, we didn't do the album. That's cool, but I'm gonna get over Rich. Rich, then, you feel me? Like, oh, that's cool. So, that kind of make up for Daryl not doing the album hooking me up with Rich, you feel me? But then Rich don't do the album. Ain't nobody getting younger. You feel me? If either uh, Am I going to be a bitch and depend on niggas all my life or am I going to go do my own thing? Am I going to go depend on me? I believe in my talent. You feel me? I believe in my talent. You feel me? So am I going to sit here and keep waiting for niggas to put me on or am I going to put myself on? And that's all it was. Like, it wasn't no... It was just... I ain't... You feel me? It, 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 I'm not for the way. You feel me? Okay. I Okay. This what I need. This okay. I need to buy some Pro Tools. I need this what I need. Okay. Niggas could have told me that in the beginning. <laughs> I love it. I think that speaks to that, that determination you mentioned earlier. If you really love this hip-hop shit, you, you're going to find yeah, a way. You got to be a fan first. Yeah. Well, the first time I ever heard of you and heard you rap, and I think this is true for a lot of people in the Bay, was on the Jackass song, Never Blink. Um, How did that Nixon come? Pryor Roundtree uh, Rich album was before that, but the Never Blink, that's what put gave me you there. more exposure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, the Never Blink is what took me up there. How did you end up uh, meeting the Jackass? Uh, I was at the grill. Um, I was at the grill recording songs, and then Jack and them was in the other room recording. And um, I didn't have no weed. And I went over there, tried to buy some weed from Jack and them. And Jack like, um, like I ain't got no weed to sell you, but you can smoke with us. You feel me? It's like you know, like Bay Area niggas is real players. Like we ain't haters. You feel me? Like. And then he already knew me from being on Rich. Like, not knew me personally, but he knew of me from just the exposure from being on Rich. You know what I'm saying? So, that was that. I sat in there, smoked with him. He played me some songs. But he didn't play me Never Blink. He played me some songs. And then, I'm like, okay. Them hella dope. I'm like, let me go play you some so we came over here. We went back to went to my room, and I played him some songs. And from whatever he heard in the songs that I played, maybe it was a melody or a tone or however did my voice or however I was rapping, 
He said, I got one for you. And we went back over to where he was recording at. And he pulled up, never blink. But he played me like three, four songs but that wasn't never blink. And then when I played him my shit, he said, I got one for you. And he pulled that song up specifically. Like I didn't, he pulled that song up and told me to get on that one. That song's really powerful. Uh, I, maybe what he had heard is uh, the melody because... He, he, oh, not to cut you off, but he already had that hook. Oh, okay. That he wrote that hook. He wrote that whole song. But he had you do he told half me, of the hook. He told me, mm-hmm. get on the hook, Jay. Put some vocals on the hook. So that might be it. He might have heard, because you have a lot of melodies in your style. I think He heard it, bro. He heard I it. I think you and Jack were way ahead of that in terms of like... Yeah, kind yeah. yeah. Hey, girl. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bro. But yeah, that song is powerful. I think uh, the beat is incredible. Shout out to Rob Lowe. Uh, shout out to Dub Twenty, who's also on that. But the three of y'all are just spitting some very real, shit. and I think that's also some people can take note of when you're really spilling some shit that's really in your heart. That's what creates great music sometimes, and I think. That song is very relatable to people who are going through those types of situations. Shout out to Jack, man. Um, that's that man's song. I'm um, happy to be a part of it. That man had the hook and everything already. He just told me to come do my verse. And then he told me to put some um, some vocals over the hook. So the first night you met him, you, y'all made that. That's crazy. The first day we met. And it's the first song on That's what became like met. his biggest album up to that point. How many n- do a song with one of their idols the first day they meet him, though? Yeah, it's crazy, man. The first day they meet him, though. Me and the McKennas didn't do a song the first day we met. I rapped for them the first day we met. <laughs> and we booked a session after me rapping. <laughs> We booked a session the first day we met, but we didn't get in the lab the first day we met, though. So, well, you did say that that song, did, that was a huge song, huge album. Had a video for back then, which is rare. Um, but you did mention that that got you a lot more exposure. I mean, it took me out of California. Like, people like, um, just like, um, like it's a little pipeline. Not not even a pipeline, but it's like, 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 like the loonies, Jack, uh, you know what I'm saying? Sebo, Andre, Nicotina, San Quinn, E40, Too Short. Like, they just they just created, like, like a circuit to where Bay Area motherfuckers can maneuver. Oh, yeah. You feel me? And the bigger you get, the, 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 the more spots you get to hit. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like, so you know what I'm saying? By that time, you're, you're already in motion with creating Livewire Records. Yeah, like, I, I created Livewire. Um, Livewire, the name came from Belly. Remember when DMX was like, Mark, this is a real Livewire. Yeah. You can do anything at any given time. But um, I always, um, I came in the game with Livewire because, like I said, I was a fan first. So I was the biggest fan of Death Row. I was a, a fan of No Limit. So I always... I never wanted to be, no disrespect. I love LL Cool J to death, but I never wanted to be LL Cool J. You feel me? I wanted to be the nigga with the crew. Mm. You feel me? That that At that point in time, that was what was in. You feel me? You get on, and then you bring your next through. You feel me? That You feel me? Like, that was my shit. So, I, 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 I always came with, Livewire, like they Livewire was never um, not there. And I, I found this out when I was doing a little research to do the history of Livewire video. I did, but there's other people who you co-founded the label with, and uh, talk about them. Oh man, um, I mean, um, I don't want to say co-founded because I founded it. It was my idea. Got you. But I um. They, they started with I you. brought them on to okay. start. So it was my idea originally with Jasper and Lil Dane. Both of them went to jail. So Jazz, I mean, not Jazz, Dane and Shady Nate was, was like damn their best friends. 
I'm the little guy. Feel me? They older than me. All them older than me. Feel me? That's why. That's why I can't say it's no co-founding because it was my idea. Got it. Okay. You feel me? Because okay. they all older than me. So you are the founder. For sure. Got you. For sure. Okay. It's my idea. Like it wasn't no, it wasn't no we sitting up and 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 we talking about we create names and one nigga say live and another nigga say wire and we say we're live wire. No. Okay. <laughs> God, I might have misstated that in the history video, but no, thank but you for they're correcting all older me. Than me. Mm -hmm. So um my my vision, it was me, Jasper, and Dane. I'm saying Jazz went to Philadelphia, shot somebody, went to jail, did 10 years, got out, and then got killed within two years. Mm -hmm. Dame did what he did and got 24 years. So both my best friends and mentors is gone. Like I keep saying, they're older than me. My, I'm the nigga who like, let's rap. Yeah. Let's do some legal shit. Yeah. They in this, you feel me? They in the streets, you feel me? They, so both of them died. When I died, Jazz died, Dame go to jail for 24 years. Shady Nate and, and Dame was best friends. And I got a little bit of traction, just a little bit of momentum in this rap shit. And I went and got Shady. So he was... Because that's the rawest nigga that I knew. And him and Dame was best friends, and Dame was my nigga. Right. And Shady deserved that. And he's also from West Oakland. For sure. For but I, it, there, there was nobody else to go get. If at that time, like, like you feel me? Like, like, this don't, like, we came up, me and him from different hoods. Mm -hmm. But we came up, nigga, you go get who, nigga, who you supposed to. At that time, me being from West Oakland, getting that platform, there was nobody else to go get but Shady. That, he, that's my, you feel me? And that's my nigga also, but he deserved that spot. You feel me? Like, if, if, if Shady was in jail, it would have been me and Dane. You right, feel me? right, right. But, like, Shady was the rawest nigga. Everybody in West Oakland was like, Dame and Shady the rawest nigga. And Dame in jail. But I got a little spot. In, in in the industry though, not in the this before this before I was even my name was even ringing this before I was even dope. This is after the jackets. Uh, yeah, this song after though? all that. Okay. But but I wasn't no god. You weren't not, all not, you not weren't no all god, the way like, on. You were still but making it, your it, way. But it was Damon Shady in West Oakland. Feel me. So, in your situation, you have. You put out your first solo record, right? Dame and Jazz, I mean, not Dame and Jazz, Shady and Dame, they kicked off the West Oakland rap, the hot shit from the young mm -hmm. Feel me? I just got a little buzz because I was on Rich and Jack shit. Like, I just happened to get two dope-ass, raw-ass verses on two rappers shit. But them been putting in they work. Right. It's but like I skipped the line. Pass the mic back to Forex real quick. So, yeah. so Rax, what was your her first impression when you met a young Jay Stalin? Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 nah, he was just uh, ambitious, rambunctious. Um, he wanted to get down. He was ready to get down with us. He, we was Like he said, we was in the, uh, Studio B. He was in Studio A. And he heard us over there tinkering around, and he came over in like, man, I want in. Like, so he started rapping for us. We like this little young, yeah, he got something. You know what I mean? And um, I have to cut you off. Go ahead. I rap to every beat they pulled up. So <laughs> yeah, he, to up and coming rap rappers, <laughs> when you walk in the studio with a with up and coming rappers, you walk into a studio with some producers. I freeze, not even freeze, whatever. I don't, I don't know if you're freestyle or written, but I rap to every beat that they pulled up. You know, like, to where it got to the point that, like, oh, so what you got to this? And I'm like, he's like, oh, okay, okay. Let me cut this off. Let me see what you can do to this. To where we booked the session. Mm -hmm. Listen. When you run into your dream producer, don't leave until you got a session book. Free game. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, he was just he was he had, like he said, he had uh he had material. 
we already seen like he's down there seasoned. You know what I'm saying? When we heard him, and I, I feel like I had some real good ears, so it was like, yeah, let's let's definitely figure this figure this situation out. Can we fuck with him? But like he said, he was with at that time. He was um, under Richie Rich, so you know we just kind of like you know just was on some peer shit. Like, okay, we respect you, but. We didn't work immediately, you know what I mean? It took a while for us to actually get into position. Like you said, we booked the session, like, yeah, we're going to work. But it took a little while for us to get to it, but we was excited. Hey, who, uh, who had y'all been producing for uh, prior to that? Up to that point, um, so the mechanics pr prior to styling had only been together maybe uh, two, 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 three years. We had just kind of got together. Okay. So we had, at, at that point, I had did a, um, a Hitters on the Payroll album to the neck by myself. And then me and Tweed did a Hitters on the Payroll album called Ghetto Storm. So we had put that out. And that was, um, that was Numb Skull's group, right? That was Numb Skull uh -huh. group from the Loonies. Uh -huh. So I told you I was DJing for the Loonies. So yeah. I had, yeah, so... There's a lot of music that was done before. This, and you know, this is all pre-internet, so it's this shit is way before you know where we you know where we at now. But um, yeah, so um, there was only a couple of albums that we had put out. We didn't have no artists. We was just you know trying to figure it out. And when we met Jane, yeah, so you saw him potentially as a vehicle for your production too, right? Because I feel like that's that's a good gem for producers is to find an artist to lock in with, yeah. especially if you're starting out and the artist is starting yeah. out to like come together and help. help well, each this other. Was, it was un, that was unsaid uh, back then. Uh -huh. Now it's like we every interview we do, we, people always say, "Well, what kind of information would you give to the next up and coming?" And we always tell them, "Yeah, find an artist." And y'all pick it, y'all create something that ain't never been created before together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But we didn't look at Jay like a vehicle to get hurt. It was because like I said, at that point, Jay was with he was signed to Richie Rich. I didn't mean a vehicle in the sense of like like a way for y'all to, to come up, but more like together. a compliment. Nah, just a we compliment didn't even see it like production. that. It okay. was like at that point it was like trying to make the best business decisions. Cause Jay was already once we got in bed, Jay had already bootlegged the album. Uh we had been through some stuff with the hitters on the payroll. We had was seeing a lot of little um, things wasn't adding up right. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So we was like, damn, if we're going to get together, we want to make sure that we, at least we do it right together. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's what built it. Mm -hmm. And the love for the music and just where we were, everything just started aligning. And when the stars aligned, we was able to, to push play. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, I mean... The first now 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 people are probably especially in the Bay are familiar with that drop right the 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 the, the, the mechanics. Yeah. The first time I heard of y'all was the song Banger Dance, mm -hmm. and that uh, had a lot to do with Jay shouting y'all out at the beginning of the mm -hmm. song, right? Yeah. Um, was that on that first album? It was on the first album. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But like so, like Jay said, when he came into the game, he came in with the live wire idea. Yeah. So there's mixtapes that we did before on behalf of the streets came out. We did hella mixtapes. That and and I'm screaming live wire, he's screaming zoo entertainment, which is our me and Tweed's like I did catch that when I was yeah, doing the so, research. Yeah. So, so the whole time before Zoo Live Wire episode. Yeah. Uh -huh. So so yeah, y'all just really clicked on the business end and on the on the music end. Yeah, yeah. I mean, cause we knew that at that point it was like Back then, we were still getting a lot of money. Producers were getting a lot of money to even, before the process even began, the producer got paid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, if you ain't got the money to pay us, we can't really get in the studio. You know what well, I'm saying? It's also like, you, back then, you had, this is before downloading programs, right? You had to like, this invest in equipment. That. You had yeah, to actually everything. be able to play the instruments, play the keyboards. If you're sampling, you're digging, you're paying for vinyl, digging the samples. Exactly. All the, so there's a lot of money that goes into hell the craft yeah, of being yeah. a producer. Even the studio time. You know, and it, wasn't, it wasn't digital, so everything was on tape. And the tapes cost it, yeah. you know, the two-inch reels cost it, then the $200. Right. So, you know, studio time was expensive. It was another reason that the value, the music, the value was in the music because then nobody had that money to be wasting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. So when that first Stalin album came out, 
did that help like get get y'all name out there as producers yeah, yeah. too? Yeah, people. I mean, people associate us together like because we we really glued at the hip. You know what I'm saying? It's like that was our first real. So me and Tweed never wanted a label. We just wanted to produce and stay in the background. But Jay needed a platform. So technically, and we were older than him. So we just created Zoo Entertainment as a label to put to drop him. Mm-hmm. But like I said, when we dropped him, he already had live wire records. He was already speaking it. Right. So us along with PK, PK came in on the tail end and, and really helped us just like glue everything to put it out because we had never put out records ourselves. Shout out to you PK. You know what I'm saying? Man. Shout out PK. Yeah, PK did a, a hell of a thing. He For just those who don't in. know, that was Jack's manager, yeah. Hustlers. So he came in and helped glue it. We didn't know how to... Um, Bring that down, bro. We didn't, we didn't know how to get records into the stores and um, um, have meetings with uh, distribution buyers from distribution companies and labels and all this shit. And we didn't know all these independent distribution labels. You feel me? That wasn't major labels and shit. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the like the little E ones, the Kosh, the Koshes, the all of them, like the Engrus. You feel me? But like. We didn't know that those little things existed yeah, like, <laughs> until PK came and like we um we go so we're going to LA having meetings with labels trying to get a major deal and PK like blood we can get that shit out and get ten dollars a CD mm. and we've been independent ever since. Yeah, I think we maybe we should break that down in a second for people who might not understand that era of slanging CDs. You can slang out the trunk old school style hand to hand, but a distributor is basically going to be able to get your music on the shelves. And in most cases, they will cut you a check and basically buy your CD off of you and then go and go sell put that, it, yes. put their price on it, mark it up, sell it to the retailer who will put the retail price on it. So back in those days when Cass was getting distrib- distribution deals, it's basically like you got the album, you print it up, you drop it off, and you walking out with a check. So uh, I used to sell directly to the stores. Right, consignment and, and shit like that. directly mm-hmm. to the stores and directly... To the distributors, so, but I but I used to charge them both the same price. So, when I first started selling CDs, I started off at like five dollars. So, so this is what they've been doing the whole time. So they getting up from us for five. They in the stores like eighteen ninety nine. You feel me? This was this remember CDs would be twenty dollars. Yeah. But so this one they still was twenty dollars. I've been rapping that long. They was twenty. Dollars. They getting it for us for five. So when I figured, so we went from five. And they figured that out. Oh, it went up to seven. Ooh. I don't know which album it was, but I just said I need ten dollars, and I don't care. Yeah. And 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 then I probably didn't even start that, but. That trend happened, and then there ain't no more CDs no more. Yeah. Like, just you feel me? But, like, I'm like, I need at least $10. Y'all selling it to the stores. The store's getting 20 Y'all selling it for 15 Why I can't get 10 I'm creating it. I'm pressing it up. All y'all doing is middleman in it. Why I can't get 10 So I got 10 for, like, my last three Real independent albums that I dis- distributed myself. Mm-hmm. Made a lot of money, but on the real, like after that, that's when the streaming shit hit and stopped pressing up CDs. Okay, so as, as you're building the roster, we was going down the list on Livewire. Uh, Lil Blood also joins the squad. He's also from West Oakland, correct? Um, and then you branched out into East Oakland too because. R.O.B. and J. Jonah. And, and at what point did Filthy Rich join Livewire? Oh, that's a crazy story. So uh, me and Phil was uh, on our way to San Diego to open up for Keek. Uh, Keek and them bought our tickets. And uh, they, they came and got me and Phil off the plane. <laughs> 
and uh, I already had live wire popping and shit. And uh, that's wait. Did you just say you got kicked off the plane? Me and so me and Phil was going to open. You know, like Tickets. we going to open up a kick. Yeah, yeah. kick like I'm a bring. I'm a I'm a bring. Come on, I'm gonna bring you. I'm a bring Phil. Y'all gonna come over for me? Like I didn't even know Phil then, but that's how. So that's how you met. Me, okay. Me, like mm-hmm. I'm a bring. I'm gonna bring Phil. I'm a, you feel me? But <laughs> we 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 were on the plane, and they come. And get me off the plane. They come and get Phil off the plane, and they say, um, "Tell them who is they? Who are you the about? police." <laughs> I mean, not the police, not the police, the TSA, the TSA. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, the motherfucker, the, 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 the TSA. So yeah, uh, they came and snatched me and Phil off the plane, and they said uh, our tickets was invalid or something, and uh, oh. and then. <laughs> We've been rocking ever since, ever since then. Dope. But yep, that's how we met. We got kicked off the plane together. <laughs> well, that was that kind of big too for Livewire to branch out of West Oakland and now you're working with someone from the East too? Um, I've been living in East Oakland since I was 10 years old. Like I'm from West Oakland, like, but I moved to East Oakland when I was 10 years old. But um, but see, I'm from West Oakland, you feel me? Yeah, it's where you from East Oakland. So okay. That's what okay. Is. So that was already that's in motion. That's yeah. what the weird, like the, the weird dynamic was, was that because until that point, East Oakland and West Oakland wasn't rocking like that yeah, musically. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's you what I was what getting mean? at. So, so styling would come. So Tweed, my brother Tweed, shout out our brother Tweed. He not here, but uh, Tweed, our studio was at his 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 house, his my, his parents' house. He stayed on High Street. That's like hey, boys. You feel me? That's like the equator of East Oakland. Right. You feel me? So um, when Styler started fucking with us, Styler was coming to High Street, and Styler would bring some of his niggas from the West. So it'd be a handful of West Oakland niggas and a handful of East Oakland niggas all sitting right here in the, in the studio. Then we start bringing in rappers like Jack and Rest in Peace Pretty Black, Rest in Peace Jack, uh, Shock G, Sophia. We start bringing all these rap cats along with all these. So we had this nucleus of just energy. It was crazy. You know what I'm saying? And right in the middle of that was the mechanics. Like So we glued a lot of shit. But that was the beginning of East and West Oakland, to, in my eyes, in my opinion. That was the beginning Another person who played a big role in your early career is DJ Fresh. And uh, we had Fresh on the podcast a while back. If you ain't seen it, go check that out. But he was mentioning kind of the same thing of how he was getting in the habit of locking in with artists. So how did y'all lock in and and why did his sound? Because also, as much as the mechanics and Jay Stalin have a signature sound, I feel like you and Fresh had a wave too with some of those 80s samples and... um, so how did how did that I had come together? <laughs> but no, um, no, um, that nigga fresh, fresh, just a, um, first of all, fresh, just a real. Nigga. Um, I, I was I was with Fab one day, and um, Fab was like, uh, my producer want to fuck with you, and he was talking about fresh, like straight up, like shout out, shout out to Mister Fab, man. <laughs> Like, like, like this real town shit though. Like, you feel me? Like, like, I didn't told you hella, like, not even, not even on purpose, just, just, just like talking. Like, I didn't, like, I didn't gave you hella alley oop scenarios. Not scenarios, but like real shit. Like, you feel yeah. me? Like, I didn't know Fresh. Fab told me, Fab was working with Fresh, and Fab said, uh, my producer want to work with you. Now, me and Fresh got six albums together. Hell yeah. You feel me? Well, we got six real worlds. We got ten albums together. We got six real worlds. Yeah, y'all. It's like you kind of have to talk about. If you're talking about fresh, you gotta talk about you. And if you're talking about you, you gotta talk about fresh. I feel like because y'all has such a strong wave. But what what so what me and fresh did? Him and Fab did that first. Sure. Him and Fab did like a. a Three series mixtape, I think. Yeah, we talked they about... Did, they did at least uh, two for sure, but... We I, talked I about that on the, on the podcast, too, that his first Tonight Show project was with Mr. Fab. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like the album that really changed things... Actually, sorry. Hold on to that. I was going to bring back the talent business situation. 
because you had a drop on there, Gas Nation. Stretch was on here talking about how after Mac Dre's passing, there was this idea of keeping the Thiz legacy going outside of Vallejo, and they had Thiz City, and they had Town Thizness, which basically was centered around Livewire. And there was a whole Livewire compilation that dropped on Town Thizness. There was a Filthy Rich project on Town Thizness, and then you had Gas Nation. So how did how did that situation come about? Uh, oh, so just like I said, so like back to Fab Blood, like, I don't mean to keep tooting this nigga horn though, but like blood, blood really a real nigga though. So, so, so that nigga, so, yes sir. So he introduced me to um to do this shit with Fresh. So I'm doing this shit with Fresh, and then after doing this shit with Fresh. I see Fab again. Not seem like that. This is all like, <laughs> like, like, like to appear like a ghost or something. But no, so, so no. So after that, he like, um, my manager want to work with you, which is which was Stretch. And then Stretch like, um, I got this um situation with um this, but we ain't we on we ain't gonna do it at City Hall. We gonna do it over here at SMC. Right. Um, I, um, I want you to be part of it. I, I want you to be, um, I want to do a town thinness and I want you to be the president of it. We also had Shemp on here too who talks about doing those covers for y'all. Oh man, shout out my nigga Shemp. <laughs> shout out to Shemp, man. Uh, so yeah, that's also why I brought that up because going into SMC, they, was, they had a lot of firepower, right? And they was putting a lot into projects. I feel like did, well, I wanted to ask you, did, did working with them bring something new to the table and help help you expand your career and, and the label as well? I mean, um every situation is a is a um is a learning situation, but um I for surely learned the importance of all the shit that needs to be done behind the scenes. Give us a couple examples, yeah. please. Like um do you know how to, um, not you, but like, we have to know how to um, pay for promotion on YouTube. I know how to do that. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. we have to know how to um, get our songs played on the radio in different regions. I don't know how to do that. You feel me? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I need to know how to I do that. I can get you on in Kansas City. Okay, please let me know. I got shout out to KC, man. They be showing me love, too. Shout out to KC, right? <laughs> but you feel me? Like, that's no, no, what yeah, I mean. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, that's like, the game. That's like, the game, like, yeah. We have the music part yeah. down pack. Yeah. Like, that ain't nothing. Making the music ain't nothing. But getting in those rooms, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, that where we probably going to be the only black face in. Mm -hmm. Those are the, them, them the big, Challenges, you feel me? They give us enough money till we can buy a house where we the only nigga on the block. But they ain't gonna give us enough money to where we the only nigga in the boardroom. Mm, damn. Drop I want to. I, I want to sit at the table. Right. Fuck the house. Right. Well, I said this before. There's a lot of independent record labels in the Bay that are just logos on the back of a album cover. But I've, and until you really start connecting those dots and learning the game that you're talking about. That's what makes it real. And I feel like Livewire has done that as like a legitimate company. Uh, but why? what happened with Town Business to where that was only like that first run of, of albums? Oh, the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the nigga who, who on SMC the nigga ran off with the money. Oh, <laughs> I will, but the other nigga, yeah, what you mean? His music shit is spicy. Y'all Y'all don't know the half of this shit. We go through way more than what y'all go through. I think Stretch but, uh, left that out of his yeah, interview. Ran off with all the money. That's why the label folded. Nigga snitching. <laughs> no, 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 I was a real well, shit. Actually, the nigga we're, ran we're, off with all the money and the label folded. Mess talked oh, about that too. Yeah, what you mean? Yeah. He ran out. Mm -hmm. Burner talked about it too. Burner like SMC owed me like over hundred thousand dollars <laughs> right now. What you mean? Did Stretch talk about that deal? Do you remember? Uh, uh, okay. Do you know about it? Okay. Deal over there being quiet. <laughs> Man. <laughs> um, okay, well, that would explain it. So, I, yeah. but I thought, uh, well, I was, this is what I was getting that nigga to. Took all the money and cut, blood. With your, with uh, and, and, and nobody, and, and, and he's still walking, he's still alive. Gross. Nobody do nothing. You know why? 
Cause he white. <laughs> if he was black, hey nigga, so they so quick to kill a black nigga. This the boy, boy, boy. If he was black, yeah, that got killed. The what that a that a that a caught that before he got to the airport. Yeah, but since he white, well, they said the same thing about George Zimmerman, right? Period. What you mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, while. Wow. Around the corner for stepping on a shoe. Man. <laughs> well, I, I was going with this though, is didn't so prenuptial agreement, didn't that come out on SMC too? Yeah. Okay. So I was where I was going with that is uh you're building a lot of momentum as we're going through this timeline. You can kind of see like the steps on the pyramid of your career. And I feel like that album represented like kind of you reached a new peak with that one. So listen. Will Bronson was running SMC. He was running it. He ain't the nigga who stole the money and ran off. The shit was on a good pace. Will was running it. It was, but the nigga just stole the money and cut. Sorry. The nigga should have just let Will run it and sat back and collected his money. It would have been probably one of the biggest labels that ever existed. But the nigga, he took all the, he did did the greedy shit. Shout out Will. Shout out Will, yeah, man. Shout out to Will. She's just met him Will to death. this week. Um, oh, damn. So that even though that album, that was a song, that was the one that had every day, every day is my birthday, right? No? Oh, my bad. Okay. That had uh, Rock Day and some other stuff. Okay. It did have birthday. It did have birthday. Oh, it did have birthday. Yeah. I thought that was, uh, you're absolutely right. Self-made me. Right. My bad. My bad. No, it's all good. All good. Self-made me. All of, self-made me in there. That was the one. Yeah, that album, because I'm just speaking on memory, right? I remember when that shit was in rotation. They had the muscle bind, the, the promotion. Green up, and then it's Obots 2. Them the two ones. Ones. Right, exactly. I'm 20 years before them. Right. Mm-hmm. So that, but so, and that shit hit like Billboard and shit too. Sure. But you're saying you didn't get the proper payout from that because of what happened with SMC. Hey, no, none of us did. Damn, that's crazy. So what was your next, I'm trying to remember. Oh, I also wanted to ask you, too, about working with Juice. Uh, because yeah, Juice elephant. came around kind of early in your career, too, right? Wow. And Juice is, uh, shout out to Juice, because he's played a lot of, he's done that a lot. He's been working with people early on, being behind the scenes when people didn't didn't realize that he was uh, making some of these things happen. How did you connect with Juice? Uh... DJ Daryl, I was at DJ Daryl house, like, but I just, I, I, I just been, I just been very blessed, blood, to be in these places where famous people come through, blood, and the famous people that come through just take a liking to me, like on some real shit. But um, same shit, I would just, like, I would, I was just at Daryl house. I was just like I said, I never, I never, I never got to do no songs, bro. I was just a little nigga in the corner with my book rapping, and then everybody like, who is he? So, you feel me? But that ain't where, but so I got my little momentum after that. But then I f- with Juice because I remember when he used to come to Daryl House, he always showed me love and was hella cool. Feel me? So, I'm saying we did the Giants and Elephants, and they did the tour. Sh- was dope. You know what I'm saying? And then uh, my name went to jail. Right. Well, he's, he's home now, so shout out Juice. Shout out Juice, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, for you as a solo artist, other than continuing to make music, is there anything that you want to do as an artist that you feel like you haven't accomplished it? Um, I just, um, I just love creating, but I just, I just, I just, like, I'm never going to stop creating. Like whether it's music, movies, clothes, um, liquor. liquor, like you feel me, cypressparklingwine.com, order your champagne bottles right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um, no, like um, entrepreneurship is 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 it's the true freedom. I like it, man. You feel me? So um. Why would, like, why would you, like, we, we fought so hard to be free. We fought so long and so hard to be free. Why not do what the f*** you actually want to do? 100%. You know I mean? Yes. Like, the white folks didn't care about giving us freedom because they knew we was going to run back to them for some money. You feel me? Like, 
how many you they didn't they didn't think it was going to be no Jay Z's and no Michael Jordans. They never would have freed us if they thought it was going to be some Jay Z's or Michael Jordans, because they're the one percent. Mm. The, the majority of people have jobs, and who who is the CEOs of jobs? Like ninety eight percent of white people. I mean, ninety eight percent of white people own all this shit, so we still work for them. Man, just hearing you say that is like. And going through your whole story, it's crazy that you got your start as like just a kid who loved music. And this ain't even no racist shit. That's just facts. No, I hear you. Yeah. And I was going to say that you, you've gone from that and dealing with what you dealt with in the streets to, I mean, now it's 20, more than 20 years later, right, that you've been doing this and you're still going, you're still dropping music. You got it. You're, I can really tell that you have grown into becoming a real entrepreneur and it's something you take very seriously. Um, it's just, um, it's just, it's, it's, it's just thinking, blood. Like I'm at like, everything I'm doing now is for my children. Like at the age and where I'm at now, like if I ain't lived it already to fuck up, it's too late. Like you, like I'm, I'm way too old to be trying to live out a teenage dream. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. I need to be working for the future. Mm-hmm. You feel me? You got to make it like, what What are you working for? Are you, are you working for to fulfill a, 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 a broken heart from your past? Or are you working to, 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 to mend the broken heart to, to, to produce a better future? You feel me? Like we... We did all that. We got money and 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 we and we flossed on everybody who said we weren't gonna be shit. And we, we did all that. No. So what's next? Right. You feel me? We showed everybody we could make it. Look at me. Ha ha ha, I made it. Okay, what's next? Right. You feel me? We can't just keep flossing on each other, just like you feel me? Like we gotta pay it forward. It's do- it's dope to hear to hear all that growth. And uh, Forex, you've been right along for the journey, too. Since those early days we talked about, you have... The Mechanics is like a very staple brand in Bay Area music. Yeah. Um, You have released compilations. You've produced entire albums for other artists. What are some... Looking back on, like, the past 10, 15, 20 years, what are some of the highlights that stand out in your production discography? Well, not to toot Stalin's uh, horn, but it's been amazing to be right here and watch him go from, like, we took a chance on each other. You know what I'm saying? So every time he takes another step, I, you know, we got our pom-poms like, go Jay. We team Jay, you know what I'm saying? And he the same way with us, you know what I'm saying? But, um... T- I mean, the whole Bay embraced us, bro, and, and, and let us really kind of have our way. So, like... They really the kings of the Bay. Like, we yeah. salute. Like, we salute to everybody. Like, yeah, that yeah. ain't even a question. Like, it ain't no... Like, that ain't even like... You feel me? Like, it's the mechanics and then whoever else. I think, yeah, I think you're being a little humble right now, bro. Like, you got albums. You did an album for Snoop Dogg. We didn't, do a, we didn't do a whole album with Snoop. We did okay. a few songs with him, though. Still, he but did a few nah, songs. I mean, nah, bro. <laughs> bro, at the end of the day. He said nah. that hella humble. It was a whole album, but... Nah, like, you did Jay, a whole album for Too Short. We didn't do a whole album on Too Short. We got right. a lot of songs okay, on Too Short. Okay, okay. You did a majority see, album did, for Too did, Short, I believe. We did. Nah, we didn't do a whole oh, album okay, on Short. Okay, I'm sure. We just, did, we just did gang songs with Short okay. over the years. Okay. Well, we we do have a whole album we did on the Loonies. We did a whole album on the, the Delinquents. The Loonies, that's right. Yes. Yeah, shout out to the Delinquents. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the Loonies. We did two albums on Keek. Uh, Withdraw and Gorilla. We did three albums on Jay. We did two albums on Hitters on the Payroll. We did an album on The Boy from SOBRB. Right. We did um, we did a whole album on Filthy Rich, East Oakland Legend. We did a whole, like we've been doing that whole albums on like you know, feel me. And then when we ain't working on, we did a whole album on Richie Rich. Richie Rich. We did a whole album. Uh, we knew a whole album. Yeah, we got we got an album, a whole album on Casual, but oh, it ain't out I'm yet. Sorry, I let the cat out the bag. Yeah. Oh, sh-
It ain't out yet. Exclusive. But, <laughs> but yeah, we did it. <laughs> but we did a whole album on Richie Rich, The Grow Room. We did a whole album on Mr. Fab, America Don't Love Us. Right, we we did a whole, we did two albums on HD from uh, Bareface. What? We did a whole Little Blood album, uh, bro. It's and it's it, we got a whole Chippers album out. Like we've been doing whole pieces, of bodies of work, and then when we not doing that, we put out these mechanics albums, which are basically compilations. Right, you know what I'm saying. So mm -hmm. yeah, we'll get to, to that too. Um, but yeah, no, nah, it's, it's it's a big body of work out there. No, that's that's sick, bro. I mean, you that's you creating that, that staple Oakland sound, and you're working with like some of the biggest so, nah, legends in no, the town. So, so just to tip my hat for those who was doing what we was doing before we were doing it. Shout out to Tom Capone's. Come on. Shout out to. Um, the Mike Mosey, the Sam Sticks, the EA Ski, and CMT. CMT was my my best friend in high school. So, um, yeah, it's it's a handful of brothers who who was doing what we were doing before we we got here. We just wanted to take it and you know, and Banks. It, the list sure. goes on and on. Rick yeah. Rock, yeah, you know what I'm saying. All the and all these is our peers. Like we right. with all these cats, right. and they show us a lot of love based on where with the work we put in. So we're just trying to keep pushing it forward. And like Jay said. Pay it for it because it's a lot of young producers that we watching. Tracks yeah, it tracks a million. Oh my God. Mm, rest yeah. in peace. Rob Lowe. Rob Lowe. Yeah, Rob Lowe. I said the list go on and on. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this is yeah. Uh, this is something I thought this is interesting, right? If you hear the new newer era of Bay Area music, it's people complain like, "Oh, we need to come together, less, less unity." But I, what one thing I think that's kind of holding us back right now. Is when you talk about the 90s, there was a real distinct sound of the Bay Area. And it, it had range. It went all the way from digital underground and hieroglyphics and, and hobo junction all the way to, you know, hardcore mob shit. But a lot of it had to do with the fact that these rappers was doing songs together and it was all and it was getting beats from some of the same producers, and that there was a real distinct sound coming out of the Bay Area. Have you noticed that change as well as a, as a producer looking at what's going on right now? You mean from production standpoint? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, well I, do I see? Well, I don't totally understand the question. So what I was saying is back in those days, right, there right. was a distinct Bay Area sound right. that I feel like I was, a, was a product of all these people working with the same kind of circle of producers. Right. Do you feel like that's changed now and people are kind of just doing their own thing and yeah. there's not a distinct Bay Area sound that's really catching on? I mean, a lot of people kind of picking up like what they see and other people do. That's what kind of what I see. So it's like, oh, that's working, let me do that. Oh, that's working, let me do that. Oh, that's working, let me do that. And then when you do that, you kind of stray away from what maybe this soil might sound like. But hip hop is an evolution it's it's supposed to constantly keep growing, you know what I mean? So you can't put no boundaries on shit. The way, the, what we love and what we sound, how we sound is because that's what we want to project, you know what I'm saying? Um, if people want to fuck with it, cool. If they don't want to fuck with it, cool. Like, it's other sounds out there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's gotten away from, I think, what our sound was considered. Sure. Um, yeah. But, uh, it's still there. We still alive, bro. We slanging and banging every day. You know what I'm saying? Uh, new mu new mu music coming as we speak. You want to weigh on, in on that too, Jay? You said you have an answer to that. Yeah, no, that um, no, it's because it's because the gang culture. A producer can't produce for everybody no more because if you're making beats for me, you can't make them for the suckers. Mm. I said it. Yeah, we done ran into that. Bro. That's what it is. Yeah. Slimmy, Slimmy B from SOBRB said some, something similar on here that there's way more politics in the Bay Area right now than there needs to be, and that definitely holds people back from working together. And I feel like this, too, at a certain point, man, like I get how, you know, I understand the streets and the culture of the streets, but at a certain point, I do feel like you got to leave certain behind to be like, bro, it's about music right now. 
I can't be, and I get how, you know, it's different for everybody, but I feel like you can't be tied down to these politics if you want to pursue your career. I feel like that has to come first. What I don't understand is um, who is everybody trying to impress? Like, that's what I don't understand. Bunch of crash dummies trying to impress crash dummies. Like, like, (laughs) like, if you, like, Rich people go to the circus if they want to be entertained. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, you rich. Just just take your kids to the circus. Right. <laughs> like, I don't I, get it. I, I think there's a big, yeah. one big problem with, with youth is, and not just these the youth of today, but youth in general is thinking that they need respect from people who are not worth respecting themselves. So fact. So listen to these guys like, and get like them, man, and get serious like, about your career, man. Like, no, like, it's, I, I don't, like. It, I, I, like, it's, I, I'm just, I'm just lost because I'm like, somebody told me that a long time ago. That's why I'm saying it. And I had to like, like, but, like, who do you want to impress? Not like not not even not even the fact that I was trying to impress anybody, but people don't even know who they want to impress. They ain't even got that figured out yet. Like you can't even hit your target if you ain't figured out what the f- you aiming at. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like who you trying to impress? Mm-hmm. You don't even know. All right, figure out who you're trying to impress first, and then go impress them. That's real talk. And cater it right to them. Yeah. Exactly. And, and cater right to them. You, f- you filter out the bullshit. There you go. Well, that's some real talk, man. Um, before we get out of here, let's talk about the future of LiveWire, and I believe you have that. Right here, you brought the future with you. You're oh, still yeah, working with artists. You're still putting it out artists. Oh, so let's, yeah, get, let's, get the, uh, let's get him some shine too, man. Young Elijah, What's man. What's going on, man? It's Elijah from Fresno, you know what I'm saying? Representing, you know what I'm saying? A little small, little city, man. We out here. We good on the audio, D, with that? This, uh, this yeah. a very talented young man. Uh, I met him at my live bar store, and uh, I, he's a very talented young man. Young man, I met him at my live watch store in Fresno. We just uh we just dropped a, a joint project together called Money Laundering. Hella dope. This man is a great, great, phenomenal writer. You know what I'm saying? Phenomenal writer, singer too. He's rapping needs some work. No, I'm just with it. Nah, nah. I'm just with it, nah, but that n- Rap and sing his ass off though. Talk your shit, Elijah, man. Tell yeah, so once you t- so so yeah, what Come you on, just man. pulled up at, uh, on Jay at his at his shop, but you just decided well, to go up there. I mean, there, there was a lot of people at Jay's shop, man. There was a, you know, you know Jay, you know when you see Jay in the city, you know there's a hundred yeah, motherfuckers yeah, outside trying to see Jay. You know what I'm saying? Right? Yeah. The jukebox. Remind me. What camera on that? Where they used to hang out at? Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. yeah. Inside my shop was. Okay. It was big. It was big. So, and then to top it off, he we were downtown, so the club was across the street. So it was mainly like every weekend, motherfuckers was just up there. So it was big. But the, the opening weekend when everybody met Jay, there was a lot of motherfuckers up there. There was there was a good handful of people. Everybody wanted to rap with him. You know what I'm saying? I just took it as. Everybody wanted to rap right there and impress him. Everybody did their verse on the spot. I was smart. I played this man a beat. I said, which one you want to get on? I let him do his part, and I went home. You know what I'm saying? I went home with mine, and I wrote to my song, and I came back. I did my part, and he liked what I did. You know what I mean? And, and he kept telling me to pull up, and he wanted to fuck with me. And we kept working, you know what I mean? And we, and we made a song. We made the 401K. Staying up, drinking that Hennessy. I didn't know you did it like that, but that's about this. I ain't feel I ain't feel yeah, sure. no stupid shit. This off yeah, on the spot. Exactly. I ain't what take it home. Bro, that was, that, that was too many people in this man's face that day. You only get one shot. Mm-hmm. Do not miss a chance to go. <laughs> so, <laughs> with that being said, oh. you know what I'm saying? I took that shit to the house. I did my ball game, you know what I mean? I came and did it. He fucked with me, kept calling me back. We kept fucking around. That's what's up. Yeah, man. I've been trying to uh, put the name. Oh, never since, man. So are you, you, are you, 
You got any projects coming out online? You dropping one today, right? Didn't well, you say that? Well, my original project you got came one out on the way about a year ago with him. So I got okay, good music okay. part one already out. You know what I mean? It's, it's that's a, a solo album. project. That's a my solo, solo project. project. I own it, but that's, but that's a solo. It's yeah. a live wire release we too. We got a big yeah, yeah. record on okay. there. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. You might. It's it's called Star. Him and Lil Blood. You can check us out. You know. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, but it's we just one. dropped a joint project together called Money Live. Got you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, Elijah, man, how does it feel being a live wire artist and uh, being part of this legacy of this roster that goes back so deep? Man, like I said, man, for just from putting on the backpack, you know, I came over here with my brother and I was just talking about it. It's been crazy how many years, you know, we've been listening to the music to be a part of it now. So being a part of it is just, you know what I mean? It's a blessing, you know what I'm saying? I, I come through and I just try to fit in and, and try to match the sound because, you know what I mean? I'm with people that have been doing this for a long time. So when I come in, I just try to match that sound and match that standard because it's high, especially with him. He, he sets the ball high for me. Like, you, you need to do more. You need to you need to really press up on You feel me? So it's like having a coach. What's, what's some of the most important things you learned about the business of rap? Uh, you need to have your shit together. Uh, you need to know what you're doing. You need to you need to not be so dumb. Like you, you need for real. Like on my mama. Like for real. Stop. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it a band with you. I'm gonna keep it a band with you. Like you need to not be dumb. Like you need to be. You need to understand what what you're writing and, and what you're putting out and and what you can get from what you put out. You feel me? Like you need to don't be don't be stupid. Like you need to understand what what you can get from what you put out. Like. If you feel like you can put out quality music, then get what you can get from that. You know what I mean? For sure. But so me, but I, I'm still working on how to tell a stupid person not to be stupid. Like, 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 like. That's where like blood. Like, I don't know how to be like, but you're f-ing dumb. Figure it out. What am I? How, what am I supposed to say? What? How do I say that? Like, like yeah, so I can't you, think. you messed up. Uh, do better. What? I can't what? think for you. You messed up. Do better. So. I think your f***ing dumb works. Sometimes <laughs> so, sometimes people need to hear, yeah, it's f***ing dumb. You can't be dumb, brother. You can't be dumb. Yeah. So at the end of the day, that's my answer to that. Like, just... No, nah, for real, because You got to be business smart, too. Yeah, this is a serious wise. game, man. This is a, you got to sink or swim in this thing, man. That's a fact. It's, sometimes you, yeah, can't, you man. can't put on a flotation device. You got to just dive in the deep end and figure it the f*** out, man. Yeah, like, there's never going to be no right time. To, there's never no right time to start nothing. If you're waiting for the right time to start something, you already waited too long. You just got to dive the f*** in and figure it out. Just do it. I got to be honest, bro. It's dope to see that you're still giving up game. You're still um, putting artists on because I think a lot of people are all about putting themselves on. And some people like keeping people around them to kiss their ass. Nah. So people keep ass kisses around them. Like, you got to kiss ass to hang around me, and then you get to be part of what I'm doing. Man, As man, opposed to, I want to just man, help these, you. Man, these I want to help you out. Cuss yeah. each other out, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, we, we don't man, do no kiss. Argue kiss. Argue <laughs> and cuss each other I tell you, man, it's a no. Man, we just, argue and cuss each no. other out like brothers and sisters, like brothers and sisters and mamas and daddies. It's, it's and big dog. We all, none of that. Yeah, we not like that. That's good. That's dope. I don't even, I don't even put them up. If I don't even I don't even f- with a motherfucker if I don't look at him it's like real real like real real, real family respect like no nah, hell no nah. nah ain't no uh ain't no uh we ain't, we ain't sending no nigga go get no cheesecake around here. there you go <laughs> okay there you go man well you have it the Livewire founder CEO and president and uh flagship artist mm-hmm. entrepreneur independent pioneer West Oakland legend one and only. Thank you, brother. Yo, off top, bro. This platform's all about giving flowers. We got the legendary Forex of the mechanics. Show so much. Thank you, bro. Thank I'm you, on, homie. My mom on TV. Mom, <laughs> I'm on TV. I'm on TV. I'm on TV. I see you. Respect, Free respect, DJ. respect, respect, Elijah. Rest granny. <laughs> my mom on TV. I respect all y'all, man. Thank you. I ain't never seen myself on TV before. So, you know, you know what I'm saying? You can just run me that tape. I know, I know. I remember that one. Yeah, no, salute, bro. Thank you for... You know, of course. Money laundering out of course. Hell. Of course. Yeah. Go check these money brothers out. Money laundering out now. Yeah. If y'all ever need our support, we're here with the platform. Album out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we'll run this back eventually. I'm sure we got more yeah, to talk yeah. about. So you heard it here first, y'all. 
History of the Bay. Thank you, everybody oh, supporting, yeah, everybody know. watching, all the sponsors. Thank you, all the guests, all the artists who've been part of our journey. This is getting bigger and better. Best f- podcast in Northern California. Best podcast in the world, baby. Mm-hmm. History of the Bay. Dregs 1, DEO, I King like said in the it. building. Yes. Jay Stalin, Forex, Elijah, Live Wild Records Forever, Bay Area. And we out of here, y'all. Peace. Recognize where you got the game. We got our own style, got our own slang. Northern California is a West Coast thing. This is the history of the bank. Recognize where you got the game. We got our own style, got our own slang. Northern California is a West Coast thing. This is the history of the bank.